We are at the last two examples for chapter four. And remember we were covering the menu function. And then, so these examples are gonna show you how to use the menu function with switch case and then uh, if else. Okay, so we're gonna have two of these examples. So number nine, what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate velocity after some given time period. All right, so the user's gonna input an initial velocity and an acceleration and then they're gonna select a time interval from a menu. And that menu is gonna have three buttons, so three different times. So they can pick a duration of time of 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. So those will be the three time options. All right, and then obviously based on the time, it will you know calculate the velocity. All right, so let's get started. So first we're gonna ask them to input the initial velocity. All right, we're going to say it's in meters per second. All right, and the next they need to do acceleration. And that would be in meters per second squared. There we go. And then finally we're to our menu. So we're going to say time equals menu. And then now this first string, remember, is the instructions, or I call it the instructions. If you look here in the little pop-up help menu thing, they're calling it the title. Okay, so it's just that string that's above the buttons. All right, so I'm just gonna say pick the time interval. Okay, and then first choice would be 10 seconds. And then it's 20 seconds, oops, and then finally 30 seconds. And don't forget, these are strings, so you gotta put the strings in there. And I'm gonna leave the semicolon off just so you can see what gets returned. So, so you can see what time equals after we make our selection. Okay, so now we're ready to create our paths. So I'm gonna use the switch option because I, like I said earlier, I think that's generally easier when you're using the menu function because you get an obvious, an obvious number to compare against. All right, so you're not gonna have a range of values in this instance. So we're gonna do switch time because time is the number that's going to uh, create our different paths, okay? So we'll have switch time and then our case statements. So the first option would be case one so this would be the case when they hit the first button. As remember, the 10 second button returns a one because it's the top button. It's button number one, so it returns a one. So in this case, we would get 10 equals, or T equals 10. All right. And I'm gonna leave the semicolon off, that way you can see when we run it, what case it's picking. So next, let's go to the next case, which would be case two. So in case two, that is the number that we get if they hit the second button, all right? Because 20 seconds is the second button from the top, so that returns a number two. So here, that's supposed to indicate that T needs to be 20. And then last option would be case three. This is what we will get if they hit the 30 second button, right? Because the 30 second button will return a value of three. T equals 30 in this case. Now, if none of them work out, so if the user doesn't pick one of those three buttons, we need some sort of error message displayed. So this is gonna go in that otherwise statement, and we'll just put display, you didn't select a time. And don't forget here, you need two single quotes to put that apostrophe. Look like that. And then we have end. So what this is doing, this is going through here and it's going to figure out what T is gonna be. And then after that, now we're gonna do our calculation. Now, if they didn't select a time, 
we can't do our calculation. Okay, so we need to do a check on that. So I'm gonna add an if block on here, and I'm gonna say if time is not equal to zero, okay, and I didn't say it earlier, but if they don't make a selection, time ends up equaling zero, okay, because they didn't hit a button, all right? So, so if you get your menu option is returned to zero, it means they didn't hit anything. All right, so as long as it's not equal to zero, then we want to do our calculation. So V equals the velocity that was input plus the acceleration times T. Okay. And then we're going to do a printf, and we'll say the final velocity after percent 2D seconds is percent dot 2 F. And this is going to be meters per second. And then we'll do slash n. And then close that quote. And the first number that needs to be plugged in there is t and then v. So this is what they'll do if they made an actual selection from the menu, if they actually pushed a button. If they didn't push a button, we need to tell them to select a time. So we're going to do else. And then we'll have display please select a time from the menu. Okay, and then end. So now we have that. And obviously you could have, you know, kind of condensed this a little bit. You could have just had your uh, velocity calculation in here. So like you could have put V right here and it would have calculated V and then displayed it. All right, but I'm, when I do these examples, I try to give y'all extra examples of the material. So that's why I created another if block, just so you have another example of an if block, if that makes sense. Okay, I don't want y'all thinking I don't realize you could do it, do it a little bit more efficiently. I'm just trying to give y'all extra examples. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. See what we get. So we need to enter our initial velocity. So whatever you want to put in, I'll just put in five. Acceleration, let's just put in two. And then here is the menu. Okay, so we generated this menu. Notice the first string is pick the time interval. So now we just pick one. I'm just going to pick the second one, 20 seconds. Notice time is now equal to two. So two was the value returned from the menu because we hit the second button. So now T is going to be set equal to 20. And then here is our statement. So the final velocity after 20 seconds is 45 meters per second. All right. So there's that one. Let's run it again. Let's make it pick a different time. All right. So here, let's put five. We'll do two again. And this time, let's do 30. All right. So now time is equal to three. It's equal to three because we hit button number three. Okay, and then time is now going to be 30, and you can see your new velocity, which is 65. Okay, let's run it one more time, and this time I will cancel it out. So you still got to enter these values. And this time let's just use this X here. All right, so there's that red box with the X. So let's X that out. Now notice time is equal to zero. And then it tells us we didn't select a time. Please select a time from the menu. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you use the menu with the switch case. All right, so let's do one more example. Okay, so number 10, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a very basic plot. We're just gonna be plotting sine of x and x is gonna go from zero to 360 degrees in increments of five degrees. And we're gonna let the user customize this plot that we're doing. They get to select the color of the line and they also get to select a plot marker if they want a plot marker. Okay, so we're gonna do two menu functions here and we're also gonna use switch case with if else. All right, so first let's generate the x-ray. So x is going, whoops. 
So x is going to go from 0 to 360, increments of 5. So we'll use that colon operator to do that. Then we're going to have y uh, sine d. We refer the d there because we're in degrees of x. Now we have our plot data. Next we need to get our color. So we're going to create a menu to do that. Let's see here. Get to see here. There we go. And then the instructions or the text at the top of the buttons will say choose a plot color. And then we're going to give him five choices. Okay. All right, so we got red, magenta, cyan, yellow, and black. Oh, black red. Okay, so it's going to be that. I'm going to leave the semicolon off just so we can see the number that gets returned. And then we need our marker. So that'll be a menu again. So this time it's going to be choose a plot marker. And we're only going to put two plot markers. That'll be enough. So we'll do star or we'll do the little dash dot. Okay, so now we have that. And I'm gonna leave that semicolon off too so we can see the number. So what we wanna do now is we've got two choices here. We've got color and then we've got marker. So you have to pick one to start off with to go down the, you know, the different paths. So I'm gonna do switch on color because we have five possible colors. So there's more of those. So let's do switch color. And then we're going to have five different cases. All right, so I know it sounds like a lot, but like I said, we can do a lot of cutting and, or copying and pasting, so it won't take that long. So case one is going to be if they pick red, okay? So they pick red, then they also pick a marker. All right, so it's either going to be a star or we got that dash dot, okay? So we need to distinguish between the markers in here. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the if else method of doing this. You could put another switch case in here if you wanted. But I'm going to use the if. All right, so if marker is equal to 1, then that means we want to do a plot of x and y. And we want it to be red with the stars. Okay, so it's going to look like that. Else, we're going to plot x and y. And then we'll have red with the dash dot. And then we end. Okay. So all of your cases are going to look basically like this. The only thing that's really going to change is your color. So you can pretty much copy from here, from the case down to the end. And then all you'll need to change, you need to change your case number and then the letter here for the color. And that'll be it. Okay, so it won't take that long. So next, this would be case two. And then we'll tab that over. So we got that. The second choice for color is magenta. So that would be an M here instead of an R. And then this next one would be case three. So case three is going to be for cyan. So cyan is C. So let's replace this letter here with C. And then case four is for yellow. So yellow is Y. So let's put a Y in here. And then finally, we're to case five. Okay. And case five, we have black. So the letter for black is K. So those are the five options if they pick one of the buttons. Now, if they hit the X and don't select a button, we need code for that. So we're going to have otherwise, let's see what it up and on here. 
So otherwise, we're just going to do a generic plot of x and y. All right, and we'll use this just the default settings that MATLAB comes up with. So just the solid blue line. All right, so now we got that all structured. So let's run this. Hopefully I didn't type anything wrong. Okay, so it ran so far. So the color menu comes up. We need to pick a color. So I'm going to pick cyan, and then I'll do this dash dot. Okay, so there's your plot formatted just like we wanted it. And if we look over here, we'll see that color was three because we hit the third button. And then the marker on that second menu is going to be set equal to two because we hit the second button. Okay. And obviously it went through the right paths in the code because the plot looks just like it should. Okay. And next let's just run this a couple more times. So this time let's do a black line and let's do the star marker. So there's your plot this time. Okay, so we know it went through the right path because the plot is formatted the correct way. Now if we look over here, color is now equal to five. That's because we hit the fifth button in the first menu. Marker is one because we hit the first button in that marker menu. And last thing we want to do, let's run it. And this time let's do yellow, but let's close out this plot marker. All right, so there you go. Yellow was a bad color choice because we can't see it, but yellow is right here. So the color is right, but there is no plot marker. All right, and you can see that here. So there's the color was equal to four. That means we hit the fourth button. And then marker is zero because we closed out that menu for the plot marker. Okay, so that is the end of uh, chapter four. All right, I will see y'all in chapter five.